coming is me another movie for you guys and uh, this movie we're reviewing this was a movie that I've wanted to see for quite some time now and I've been pushing it back because I wanted to wait for it to be one of the last um, of the films I watch in 2015 and I've wanted to watch it for a very long time now and finally I've seen it and that movie is the end of the tour now the end of the tour is a movie that you probably might not have heard a lot about I mean I think the movie is starting to get a bit more attention because more people have reviewed it. But, me personally, aside from those reviews, I heard nothing about this movie. I knew it was marked by A24, and I knew the two stars that were in it. That was enough of a reason for me to see it. But I really didn't know too much of what I was getting into, and that's one of the reasons why I was really looking forward to this movie. A24 has yet to disappoint me. They've made really great films thus far, and End the Tour really looked like one of those films. And I really knew the most basic of stuff going into this movie, and I came out absolutely loving the end of the tour, and I'm so happy I watched this movie because End of the Tour is one of the best movies of the year, without a doubt. This will definitely have a place in my top 10. And I know I keep saying that, but the top 10 list, I'm really trying to make it, um, you know, I'm trying to make it, and I definitely feel that no matter what happens, this film will definitely have a place on my list because... Not only was the end of the tour a very effective film, it's a very important film and a very insightful film that honestly I think anyone can relate to, and I'll talk about why. But let's get to the plot of the end of the tour, which is pretty basic, but the movie is anything but basic. Basically, this movie is about two people. You have David Lipsky and David Foster Wallace. Now, David Lipsky is this reporter for Rolling Stone. He normally interviews just like boy bands and musicians and things like that. And uh, he's also a writer, though, and he's not very popular. He's not the most popular of writers. He only has like a bit of success and... Uh, Basically, he is, um, you know, he gets very inspired by this writer, David Foster Wallace, um, who he's written this book, and it just, he is in awe of how insightful, how incredible, and how popular he really is. So he decides to travel to meet him to basically find out more about him, and eventually this sparks a huge bond between the two, and that's basically a plot of the end of the tour. So yeah, the plot of this movie does sound very basic, but it's a lot lot more than that, and that's something I really do love. Mainly the thing that just works so well is these two characters of David Foster Wallace and David Lipsky. Now, I don't know if the movie told the exact story of these two people. I don't know that. But frankly, I don't care. I've said it a million times, I don't need to know the true story. What I need to know is how can you make this into a good movie? And not only did they make this into a great movie, they made it into an amazing movie and some of the best stuff I've seen all year. One of the things that just works so well is just these two characters in general. One of these two characters are going to relate to him. Both these performances are amazing, but let's just talk about both of them. Jesse Eisenberg does play our main character of David Lipsky. By far, one of his best performances. When you meet David Lipsky, he's not the, that different. You know, he's not that weird. He's not even even that eccentric from anyone really he's not that he's a very basic guy you know he's a reporter for rolling stones there's not really much else about him that's something i really liked about his character it's just the way he looks at things he looks at things as any individual would he's not that extraordinary yet he's not that extraordinary and that's something i really loved about his character and he really portrayed that very very well and you can see that he gets very ca caught off guard by david foster wallace and i really loved his character because that he really did a great job and Constantly throughout this movie, something I love the most about his character is constantly throughout this movie, he's being told, you gotta talk about the interesting details, you gotta, you know, you gotta portray him in this way. He's not interested in portraying David Foster Wallace in a certain way. He wants to get all the facts. He wants to actually get to know this guy. He doesn't just want to do a straight-on interview where he asks him all the things that people want him to talk about. He wants to know pretty much everything about David Foster Wallace, the way he looks at life, and it's one of the most interesting things about his character. I really thought he did an incredible job, and he really was great. But by far, the star of this movie, without a doubt, is Jason Siegel as David Foster Wallace, who is one of the best characters I've seen all year, with Without a doubt. 
The second you meet his character, there's just something off about him. You can't tell what it is, but there's something off about him. He acts very depressed. He doesn't even really want to be part of this interview. He basically tells him, look, I want to have a conversation with you, but I don't really want you to quote what I say. He himself doesn't think he's that great, and I really love that about his character. You know, he really puts himself down a lot. The way he looks at things really was very fascinating. I thought these two characters really did a great job, and the whole movie... They're just having a conversation. Honestly, that's this entire movie is these two men having a conversation, but it's so interesting because of how much he changes his life. David Foster Wallace just makes, um, you know, David Lipsky just look at things in such a different way, and it really made me interested in looking at some of David Foster Wallace's works. In fact, Honestly, I'm probably going to look, maybe do some deeper research into his character, into him as a person, because he's very interesting. I don't want to spoil what happens to him because it's in the very beginning of the movie, but I do feel that you should go into this movie not knowing a lot, so I don't want to say that. But I really think he did an incredible job, and I really love both of these men. They all were great. Everyone else in the movie was great. They weren't that big, but the thing is that the movie really is about these two men. And while they do come, you know, while there are certain people in the film, most of the film is supposed to be about just these two men. So I'm not really going to talk about any of the other characters. I really did like Joan Cusack in the film. I liked her. I thought she was really great. I like these two girls that they meet up with, Betsy and Julie. They actually create this really interesting interesting conflict that I really liked, and I definitely like where it was going. Also, something else I want to say about David Foster Wallace is he seems like this man that's just, he's being pushed to his boiling point. Every time he opened his mouth, I'm like, he's about to explode. This entire movie, he felt that way. It felt like he was holding something back. There are certain things that seem like a big deal, that should be a big deal, but he just pushes it aside. He'll briefly mention things. It's very, very interesting, and I really love that about this movie. And that's something that really works so, so well. Well, the directing here by James Ponsolt, I really love. This is not supposed to be a fact-based story, and that's something he did very well, is that he didn't tell this movie as, oh, this is what happened, then this happened, then this happened, then this happened. What he did was he put you into these characters, and he made you feel like you were getting to know David Foster Wallace. When, you know, when David Lipsky is interviewing him, you really feel like you're getting to know his character. And what I love about it the most is that you kind of feel like, okay, I'm like David Lips. I I'm like David Foster, you know, I'm like David Lipsky. I'm finding out more about this character. We don't find out any more about him than David Lipsky does, and it really makes this whole thing a lot more worthwhile, and I definitely really love that about the film, and they really did that very, very well. But by far, the best thing about this film, without a doubt, is the screenplay. Because the, what End of the Tour did for me, there have been many films like End of the Tour that have tried to do what End of the Tour did. However, what the End of the Tour did best for me is show that you don't need any sort of conflict in this movie. You don't need that. You don't need conflict. You don't need really um, any action. You don't even need to really go many places. All you need are two really great performances. That's exactly what End of the Tour is. There is no big moment in the End of the Tour. There is a big moment, sort of, but most of this movie is just two people talking and finding out things about each other, and it's very, very enthralling, and I love that. I mean, they talk about the most basic of things. In one scene, they go from talking about dogs to talking about television to talking about fame, and everything the movie's talking about, it has something to say. Now, there are some fun moments in this movie, definitely. There's a scene when they go to a movie. It's really funny. They're talking about this movie they really didn't like. It was actually pretty funny. I definitely enjoyed that. But... The movie also is very insightful and has so much to say about life and the way people look at things and how things might not be the same way and how one person can just change your life for the better and you need to honor their legacy. It really was very deep and that's something I just really loved about this entire film that they just did so, so well is really get into what matters the most in this movie and they really did that in a very, very good way and I definitely really did appreciate that because that there really aren't too many spoilers spoilers and the movie also is very, very suspenseful. I mean, this is a movie where I really didn't know what was going to happen. Like I said, David Foster Wallace 
This entire movie, just any conversation he has with him, it seems like he's about to explode. It seems like he's about to blow his top and yell at him and scream at him. I mean, he really seemed like this man with this huge ego. And I really didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, there's there's a scene where he's, in, you know, basically asking him this one question and he goes off the rails about it. It is incredible to watch. And... I just loved it. I love what they did with this. Now, am I saying this movie necessarily needs to get Oscar nominated? I mean, yeah, it might deserve some, but in many ways, that's not really what this movie's about. The, one of the biggest parts of this movie is simplicity and how we shouldn't take fame for granted. That's one of the big things that David Foster Wallace brings up, and I think the movie really represents that very well. Because while we know Jesse Eisenberg and Jason Segel can act very well, that's not the thing that makes this movie so good. It's really the message that the movie has and the impact that it leaves on you. One of these two men you're going to relate to. One of these two men you're going to be interested in. And that's something I thought they did very, very well. And as the movie movie went on it just it gets more and more interesting I was worried that this movie was going to be very slow it started off in a slow way but it just got more and more interesting as it went on and I really did love that it's a movie you really do need to pay attention and listen intently to dialogue because you'll miss some very interesting revelations about the characters that I don't really want to give away and I really would recommend you guys check that out because it really is very interesting and I also really got into the rivalry between these two, because while these two are definitely becoming friends, there's just this huge rivalry between them. You get this sense that Lipsky is just getting caught off guard because Foster Wallace is more loved than he is. He's more experienced than he is. He's just a much different person overall, and he really doesn't know how to deal with a lot of these things and really doesn't know how to approach him as well. And that's something I really, really loved is the way that they handled all that. You know, just the scenes with him being berated by his boss. You gotta talk about these things. I just really love the way the movie did that. The movie had this great message as well as don't just tell Tell it like it is. Don't just tell the things that you want to talk about. Find out more about a person. Because let's talk about, like, the news, for example. When you see headlines of, oh, this person did this, what do you remember them for? Something bad that they did. Let's take someone like, oh, Michael Jackson as an example. I'm going to just randomly reference a celebrity. A lot of people think of Michael Jackson as a ch supposed child molester because of some things he might have done in his past. But Michael Jackson did a lot more than that. There, were, there was a lot more to him. We don't personally know him. And that's something the movie did very, very well. It's that you don't really know someone until you actually have a full-on conversation with them. You might think you know someone, but you don't. And the movie really handled all of that very, very well in a very deep way. And I really did appreciate that. Danny Elfman's score obviously is great. I really thought he did a great job with the score to this movie. It's a very psychological movie. The cinematography here is great. And something I really love about cinematography is the way it went with the scenes. I mean, if the scene's really light hard, it's in this nice light background. But if it's dark, it's in a dark background. They really did that very well just to show this is how this person is feeling. And also just finding out things, you know, the cinematography really is a big part of David Foster Wallace's personality because... His apartment in general is just very fascinating to look at, and I really found it all to be very interesting. I definitely really appreciated that. The movie was the exact length it needed to be. I really was into it the entire time, and I really did love it. It had a fantastic ending as well. I love the way the ending of this movie happened. I thought it was just fantastic. Just It really felt like you've come full circle with the character of David Lipsky and the character of David Foster Wallace. They're both extremely enthralling, extremely interesting. That's one of the reasons I loved End the Tour as much as I did, and that's one of the reasons why I would definitely recommend it to everyone. It's a great movie. It's not really a movie I can review, though. It's more of a movie that you just need to see for yourself. That's why this review isn't going to be 20 minutes. And you guys probably think, oh, you're going to give the movie an A+, plus. it's going to be 20 minutes. Not necessarily, guys. Even though I give a movie an A+, plus, does not mean I have a lot to say about it. It's a movie that just, it's about quality. That's how I grade films. I grade films based on quality. Some people base them on enjoyment. I base them on that, too, but I base them on quality. I really do. Like, how did they affect me? What did they leave me with? This movie had a great impact on me. This movie really was very memorable to me. It had a lot of things that I thought were very important. A lot of things I feel a lot of films are willing to not do. Concussion, the movie I just reviewed, for example, they only had one-sided views. This movie gets both of these men's viewpoints. They both have very different ways at looking at various things, and it's very interesting, and I really love that, and I loved 
the rivalry between these two. I love the, the eventual bonding between these two that they have is also really great. They have great chemistry. I forgot to say that. Some of the best chemistry of the year, without a doubt. They have amazing chemistry. They both worked very well, and that's one of the things that just elevated this movie so, so well. I mean, you could have casted two people that just, if they would not have worked together, the entire movie would have failed. And luckily, these two just worked so well. They seem like they really knew what they were doing. They really did get into these characters, and that's one of the reasons the movie worked as well as it did. And without a doubt, I am definitely going to give The End of the Tour a 5 out of 5 or an A+. Plus, it is an extremely incredible film with so many insightful details that I'd love to talk to you guys more about, but this is really a movie where you don't talk spoilers, because there really aren't any spoilers in this movie. This is more of a movie that you just, you experience, you watch, you can talk about it, and yes, it will definitely appear in my top 10, but it's not really a film you can talk about because it's very dialogue-driven. It's very much um, one big conversation and that's one of the reasons I can't really talk about it too much because the movie itself is just so well made and that's why I'm giving it an A+. But overall, guys, let me know what you guys thought and the tour if you have seen it. I absolutely love this movie. I highly recommend you guys check it out. However, it is not a film for people who go to the movies only sometimes. If you go to the movies just for big budget movies, this is not one of those films. This is a movie that you need to listen intently to dialogue. This is a movie where you need to find out revelation about characters. I love movies like that. I love movies where one conversation can completely set a tone for a character. I love movies where a look of a character just matters so much. This is one of those kind of films. And if you don't like that, they go as far as to talk about the headband he wears. I mean, they really go far into these two men. If you don't like those kind of movies, you're not going to like this film. But other than that, definitely check out the tour. It's an incredible film, and I can't, and I really recommend that all of you check it out because it really is an absolute masterpiece and really will leave you with a lot to think about. But overall, guys, my review and the tour. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm not sure you guys saw this movie. You have seen it. We'll see you guys in my next video, which will be for another movie review, which this movie review I'm about to do, I am extremely excited for. I have wanted to watch this movie for a very long time. I'm so happy that I will finally be reviewing it for you guys. Um, and I can't wait to review, but I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.